Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Loretta. I am super pumped right now. In my last video, which was way too long ago, I shared a secret file folder where I used to keep all of my audio diaries where I would practice Japanese. So as promised, today is part two of embarrassing myself for the sake of learning. You guys ready for the cringe? Oh good! This already sounds a lot smoother. These are probably phrases I use all the time in the audio diaries. I'm probably used to saying these things. The only thing is there's a lot of eto, eto, eto. People think if you talk fast in a second language, you must be good, and that's not necessarily the case. Instead of saying eto, 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 I could have just taken a breath and slowed down a bit, and that would have been totally fine. ま、すごい、すごい。That's a casual way of talking. But I still do that today. すごい instead of すごく. すごく uh, is an adverb, so we use adverbs before verbs. Now go. え、改革の報告がありました。ははやっぱりまた報告と改革も使いました。で、本当に忘れたくない言葉は、え、もちろんその改革改革と開始ですね。例えば試合は9時9時開始です。そう、言葉と開発もそして今日が今日化するも I was really into using I know, which would just kind of like slam you in three and two ish words. I know kaikaku, I use that so much in a YouTube video. It's like, kyoiku no kaikaku o suri hitsyo ga aruto omoimasu, or something like that. So, what's happening right now is that I'm actually just trying to use these words in Japanese because I have no chance to use them otherwise, which is good. Mm. There's a cat outside. The point was I wanted to use these verbs that I had learned. I wanted to talk about invest because that sounds like a cool, fun word. You can tell I don't know what I'm talking about because you don't say oki kaisha or oki oki kigyo. Um you say dai kigyo. Chushokiyo, a small or medium sized business, then chakiyo, startup kiyo. You don't even say a big company invest into a little company. You would actually, there's a better word for this than toshi suru. It would be baishu to actually buy up the company. The point, the point was that I didn't know how to use this in a sentence, but I would be darned if I wouldn't try. Um, so this is just me trying to use the word toshi suru. So, ne, mm, so, toshi suru is not something that a company does. Toshi suru is something that an individual does. Kojin teki ni toshi suru. When a company invests in another company, that's called a buyout or like an acquisition. And there are words for that in Japanese. Baishu, baigaku. But in this case, I actually had a, an example that I wanted to use. So, when I found the word toshi suru, I clearly had also made a note of an example sentence to go with it. Wow, I had some big dreams back in the day. But yeah, um, Kanren Aru, Kanren no Aru, Kanren Shita, Kanren Shita, Nihongo Kyoiku Ke no Kaisha. そうできるため、そうできるため、じゃなくてそうできるように日本語教育に関連ある会社がえっと私の会社に投資する必要があるっていう言い方。空間ある会社が私の会社に投資する必要がある。うん。えっと日本語教育系の会社を。作りたいんですけど、一つの方法として日本の会社に売却することを目指しています。え、あとは何でしょう。あとは何でしょう。そのぐらいですね。そのぐらいですね。じゃあ、バイバイってあって。すごいね。なんか<笑> 
Oh my god, close this, close this, close this, close this. So just looking at these files, this is only about a year after the original file that we first watched. The way that I'm speaking at this point, this is 2011. This was maybe seven years ago. In terms of like fluidity and the ability to glue sentences together, that's here. Like, those filler words are there that are gluing sentences together that I still depend on now. And what was missing was a lot of collocations. For example, knowing that a company does not invest into another company, it acquires it. Just what words go with what words and what words go with what other words. In English, things that we know sound unnatural, things that we know sound a little bit weird, those are called collocations. For example, you can say turn off the lights and you can say shut off the lights but you don't say close the lights. Like, shut and close are basically the same word but why can't you say close the lights if you can say shut off the lights? The best way to get familiar with collocations is to listen obviously to more natural speech. For example, if I want to be able to speak more about business, if I want to be able to speak more about companies in a more fluid uh, native sounding way, then what I should do is start listening to podcasts that talk about business news, start listening to actual news clips every morning. Honestly, listening to the news, just brief news, would have probably been the best thing to do at that point. You know, you find your topic, find out how to say that word in Japanese. Well, this for me is business, so kei, gape for mergers. By gaku, I still, I still clearly didn't know that word. If those are the words I wanted to study, then I should just Google those, find clips that I talk about it maybe even on YouTube, and just listen to those, you know, keep clips of those. I have a whole folder here of bilingual girl Chika, audio clips that I made of her so that I could imitate her because, you know, she speaks very clearly and it's very good to listen to. But for more like technical senmonyogo, for more technical terms, just looking up the actual name of that field and then finding clips on YouTube, etc. may be one of the best ways to really brush up your collocations, your sense of knowing what words always go with what words. You know, words come in pairs and be able to learn them from a top-down method where you're seeing the whole picture and just learning to imitate that. What I was doing was I was doing a bottom-up method. I was learning each word one by one, toshi suru, and trying to find a way to use that in my daily life. That shows a lot of initiative, but in order to sound more natural, um, in addition to to trying as much on as I could on my own, I should have also had a lot more native samples to imitate as well. OPI. I oh, I recorded my OPI. What did I sound like when I was actually being tested? Where did I record this? Wow, okay, I'm just busting in. Okay, I'm surprised I was even using Kegel. Before this OPI exam, the oral proficiency exam, I had told my professor I was really nervous about speaking polite because there's a polite section that you have to do. I can't memorize all those verbs. I already know how to say taberu. Do I have to memorize meshiagaru? And she basically was like, don't do all that. You can just use the verbs, you know, and add itadakimasu ka. Can you do this for me? And if somebody does something for you, take kudasatte. Etc. Etc. I probably memorized how to say that so that I could start with something and tell them I can speak well. I probably wanted to make a good first impression by telling them what to do. I use that a lot. I use I make a lot of tekini as like a crutch when you can just say setsumi I was nervous and they asked a question. Buy yourself some time, take a deep breath, prepare yourself to answer those questions by saying so this net. If anyone asks you something, so this net. They're I think they're asking about a scary scene with my dog. そうですか。そうですね。そうですね。え、自分の成果を知らないんですけど、えっと、
Okay, so here here's something that I talked about earlier. The issue that I'm having here is with a lot of sense of the subject and the predicate. Who's doing what? O versus ga. Nope, I said nope, but I'm talking about her leash. I took off my dog's leash and she ran away running through the streets. So I said nope o hazushi. That sounds like I took off the rope and then I started running through the streets barking. Obviously my dog was the one who ran away barking. But that's not as succinct and clear as it could have been. Very simple. When you start a story, you can usually end it with kido. Um, adding in Liri ga, I didn't add in that Liri ga. So I already knew I was a subject, so I was like, should I put Liri wa? I can't have two wa's in a sentence, what should I do? If I just added Liri ga, then suddenly we have a clause in there that lets you know that the verb, it wasn't me who was running and barking, it was Lily, um, and that was missing because I was afraid of wa and ga and o. <laughs> I don't know why I put that oomph there on the bed. It doesn't need to be the the, the issue is when you put random emphasis on there, it's hard to actually tell where the phrases are ending. In the middle of a verb, especially kikai, chances to play or chances to hang out together. When you put the oomph in the middle of that word, it's hard to tell what I'm actually saying. The chance to hang out, it just it's distracting. <laughs> Tina, what a nice note to end on. My speech definitely got a lot better. This, this, I feel like this is my second OPI. Wow, storytelling and my business calls. I have almost 40 files or so of just old speaking Japanese. I don't know if you guys want to hear more of that or if this is just too cringy for you guys. That one presentation was a hot mess and that was specifically because I did not practice. Not so much 10 years ago, but now thanks to YouTube, there are so many people who upload videos of themselves just like speaking. Here I have clips of Violin Girl Chicas talking about like specific phrases, but that's very bottom up in terms of how to fit phrases into your, into your sentence. In terms of actual top-down samples of people you can practice, one of my friends, Aki Sanbonjuku, he does a lot of videos where he speaks at a normal at a normal rate and then he breaks it down from there. So you can get like the sense of how it should sound naturally and then a chance to actually rehearse it. I think that's very useful. Maybe I should look into some podcasts for you guys. Podcasts, YouTube videos, news reports, simple news, anything where there are actual whole sound bites that you can start breaking down, study those words, and then build them back up into sentences. Because like I was doing with the news, uh, the news report with Toshi, this shows a lot of initiative in that I was trying to practice words on my own, which is very important. Along with that, you also have to have uh, native samples to rehearse, to shadow. If you want to learn about news, search news on YouTube. If you want to uh, study about food, look for food. You know, find those shows on Netflix, for example, and turn the audio into Japanese, things like that, and start learning those words that are in that realm of speech. And then find a way to actually shadow people who speak the same way. So like Gyori, people who do cooking shows on YouTube, things like that. The biggest moral that I'm seeing after watching these videos is that when you hear your voice, when you hear these things, your own voice can be one of the cringiest things in the world sometimes, but that's when you actually get to improve. That's when you actually get to hear what you do all the time. I say ma and eto so many times. I use de in sentences that are already connected, so, and which is like next or and. This kido. De. Just because I pause doesn't mean I need to fill it with de. I probably should start doing audio diaries again and listening to this because that's one of my biggest weaknesses and that's what I want to work on. This is a weird video. What do you guys think? Did you like this? I'm not a native speaker, so I'm not an expert in Japanese, but I am an expert in my own cringe. So that's what today was. A little review of me 10 years ago and now. The next few weeks are going to be insanely busy. The next month specifically, I have to get my thesis done by Christmas. I broke my phone recently 
recently, my beautiful yellow Sony Xperia that you guys always ask about. This is my new phone. The, the camera, the sound, everything on it is great. Can you guess what phone it is? The blue color should be a big hint, actually. Now that I have a new lens and I have a new phone that actually works, I will be uploading a lot on Instagram. So if you don't see me on YouTube again exactly this time next week, you can probably see where I am on Instagram. Rehearse, audio diary, top down, and shadow someone who speaks better than you. That is the moral for today, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye!